On top of the GeForce Now updates, we got to demo at CES 2026, which showcased support for Linux and Fire TV. We also had access to the NVIDIA GeForce DLSS 4.5 demos in the next room. Now, we don't know when it's going to be hitting GeForce Now, but we do have some detail on it told by NVIDIA reps. Let's get into it. So for a quick background on what DLSS 4.5 is, the update to DLSS brings multi-frame generation up to now 6x, also crazy path tracing updates, and dynamic multi-frame generation. We're introducing DLSS 4.5. We're releasing our second generation transformer for super resolution. It's five times more compute and is trained on an expanded data set. So the model has greater context awareness of every scene and more intelligent use of pixel sampling and motion vectors. These improvements make super resolution performance and ultra performance modes so much better. It has superior anti-aliasing for smoother edges. We've also made multi-frame generation better in every way. The second generation transformer delivers superior image quality as input to the frame generation model. The frame generation model has been continuously fine-tuned for improved quality and stability. With these improvements, we can now generate up to five additional frames per rendered frame with minimal change to latency. Along with the 6X capability, DLSS 4.5 also introduces dynamic multi-frame generation. This mode dynamically increases the number of generated frames in demanding scenes maximizing the monitor's refresh rate for the smoothest possible experience. In less demanding scenes, it automatically decreases the number of generated frames, so it only computes what's needed. So that's the general overview of DLSS 4.5. Now let's see some of these details in person. Now on top of the addition of 6x frame generation, they went into detail regarding their new feature, dynamic frame generation. Demo, you should see it switching between 5x and 6x. Yeah. It's kind of trying to figure out where it thinks it should be, and you know, it could change every two seconds. Um, but if you want to try moving around, you can see if you can feel it. What we're kind of expecting, and what, what I've experienced, is that this, because it's targeting 240 FPS, because this display is 1440p 240, uh, okay. it's going to keep the same level of smoothness even as the demand of the scene changes. So it's, it's this interesting thing where, where your smoothness doesn't actually change. It is possible that if you get to like a really demanding environment where just your, your CPU cannot put the frames or anything, like your latency goes high even regardless of FG, you might still feel the latency change, but with the, it'll keep the same optimal level of smoothness. So, I mean, I can well, show you, this is 1440, 240 on 5060 ties. Um, hmm. So this is 5x, 6x, if I go over, here, it should go to 4x, because my FPS is climbing really high, right? Yeah, so it, it, start, it starts cranking yeah. now. And then if I go over here, yeah, we just did it. Yeah. see my FPS is dropping, so now yes. it's saying to raise the... Yes, it's so, how, so with really fast-paced games, how long does it take to jump back and forth? Um, I mean, we... We're still experimenting with, mm -hmm. with how frequently we want us to do it. Yeah. Um, but right now for this demo, it would be every two seconds. Every two it, seconds. it could change the mode. Okay. But it's, it's reading every frame and, and kind of figuring out every frame what it thinks it should be at. It just might only change every two seconds. Mm -hmm. But we're still figuring that out. Yeah. I don't know, by the time it releases. So this is spring, all these frames. Spring? Okay. Can, they, can you try? Yeah, yeah. Now it's kind of hard to see here, but Hefe who was filming was trying to get the conversations of what everyone was saying. But I tested this out to see how well the dynamic frame generation worked. And depending on where you are on the screen, the frame gen does switch up or down depending on the demand. Now as you heard, they said they're still playing with it, but my take is, is that two seconds might not be quick enough depending on the game. But overall, it seemed to work just fine, at least on Outer Worlds 2 here. Now let's move on to path tracing. Path tracing got a massive overall here. Do you remember when I covered the cyberpunk path tracing when it launched and all it really seemed to do was tank frames? Well, that has changed significantly. We met with one of the NVIDIA devs who actually worked on this cyberpunk path tracing, and we also have a Capcom dev here showcasing the new game Pragmata. Uh, it's a sci-fi action game, brand new IP for Capcom, really excited about it. It's um, been in development for many years and finally coming out this April on the 24th. Uh, in the game, you play as you and Diana. Uh, Diana helps you um, 
pack enemy. She's an android, and you will blast them once they're vulnerable. Uh, it's powered with our uh, RE engine, uh, which powers a lot of other games like Resident Evil series, Monster Hunter, Street Fighter, etc. We have some like, amazing photorealistic visuals in the game, and we're really excited uh, this week to be talking about uh, integrating path tracing into the game, as well as DLSS 4.5. Mm -hmm. So we have like a side-by-side -side here. Um, with the features off and then on, and Marshall can go over that as more in detail. So we're just kind of like showing the difference between its traditional rasterized techniques. So like, I think before the RTX GPUs existed, right? Versus like modern path tracing techniques that you would use today. So one of the first things we're going to look at is that shadow So on the left side, we're using shadow maps, traditional rasterized techniques. And you can see it, it suggests that there are shadows under the paper here mm -hmm. and underneath these containers as well. Mm -hmm. But the shadow map isn't quite the right size for what this container is, and it's not quite aligned with the papers on the ground. It looks odd. Yeah, it's, it's there, but it's not quite right. And on this side, what we have is perfect aligned uh, shadows yeah. on the paper on the ground. And even under the container, that even has a little curvature there. You can see that there. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It kind of looks like it's always, you've always seen shadows like this. It looks like it's hovering off the ground. Yeah, this looks like it's actually placed. Mm -hmm. One of the cool things, because it's set on this lunar research colony that they have, they have all these great metal, plastic, and glass materials mm -hmm. that all handle reflections slightly differently. So what we have here is this metal panel that actually has like this fine hex grid pattern in it. You can see that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so as a result of that, it's not quite a perfect reflective surface. So you can see a reflection of the character, but it's a little soft, not quite sharp. Right. But as I go over here, we have a different metal panel that actually has like a stamped metal panel to it. So it's slightly different angles. So if I zoom in here, if you look right at the little like cross section there, so I bring that over the lights, it reflects all the off of all the panels yeah. at the same time. It's all slightly different mm -hmm. angles to each other. Slightly different, yeah. That's pretty cool. Oh, we show the hair, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, has my hair, hair. yeah. So, a lot of games. They, have, <laughs> they have this uh, hey, wonderful hair. strand based <laughs> hair. They have this wonderful strand based hair in our engine, and they use it on Diana here. But it's also in the reflection as well, so yeah, you can see it's represented there, and it's also animated. So, as you jump up and down, you can see the hair animating in the reflection as well. Jump. So talking about with the different metal surfaces. So this is actually two different metal types in the game, right? So we have this more smooth type. Mm. We have that hex grid pattern type again. And you can see the reflection there even as I go across this transparent glass again. We're going to come over here to this helmet with the gold reflective visor. And you can see right there. There, you can see this. Yeah, that's really there. cool. And you can see the angle of where he's going. Yeah, yeah exactly. Cool. Now, this actually sparked a little controversy because if you noticed, they didn't show any performance metrics. Back when I was testing path tracing first, right? Mm -hmm. I think it was Cyberpunk. And I mean, to be honest, I didn't see any too many differences. Maybe I didn't have the right example. But seeing this, this is, this is, this is. Crazy. This is crazy. Well, when you were looking at Cyberpunk, were you looking at RT versus Cloud Tracing, or were you looking at no yeah. RT? I think, we, I, think, I, I think I tested everything. Like okay. nothing versus RT, this is RT versus Path Tracing, and then, you know, Path Tracing versus nothing. But yes, I understand. If you're already doing, I mean, it's Cyberpunk, which, you know, I help, help you kind of set up a lot of those things as well. You see so much ray tracing done before you get to Path Tracing, but yeah, that delta is maybe the extreme. In this is on what's the performance? That's what I was looking at. So we're not discussing performance today. This is, still, <laughs> this is still a game in development. This is a preview build, debug development build. So performance isn't going to represent anything that we can do. No, granted, it looks at least 60, so... It's, it's not bad, mm -hmm. but I can't tell you for sure what right. it's going to be like. So. And lastly, for those looking for information about the additional latency with more frame generation, this is what was said. I mean, it's changing a lot. You would have to benchmark it. Um, I think in our benchmarks, this was around 5ms, but it's going to change the time just because of how, how latency changes. But then when you were in the new model, it was still around 5ms. Yeah, the new model in my testing with this setup of 5080s, it's around 3% less FPS, which is very hard to see with your eye, right? Oh, yeah. Um, 
or, or the latency also wouldn't it wouldn't be noticeable. You would have to benchmark it to really get the difference. Yeah, five milliseconds is hardly noticeable. Probably noticeable as that was G Yeah, add that to G now and you might have a little bit of troubles depending on how far you are. Yeah. Yeah. So that wraps up our demo. The super resolution changes are already live, but dynamic multi-frame gen and 6X is set for spring this year. I also don't know when it'll be hitting GeForce Now. We'll have more information and details as we get closer to the release. So if you like this overview of the DLSS 4.5 changes, give us a like. Also, make sure to join as a member of the channel or join our Patreon and our Discord in the links below. And above all else, make sure to subscribe to keep butt locked right here at the only place we can do battle in gaming heaven, Cloud Gaming Battle.